Hi, welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today's conversation is with Jackie O, Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis. I have been wanting to speak to her for quite some time now, but it never quite felt like the right timing. Well, today is the day. I hope you will enjoy this conversation. All right, so this is going to be a discussion style conversation with her in the afterlife. So you will be having to watch me talk and also respond, share the information that she brings forward. Okay. All right. So I feel like, let's see. I can really, okay. I see her with a scarf around. Remember, I'm clairvoyant, so of course I will describe to you what I see. That's how it works. And I see her with a scarf tied around her neck and big glasses. They're, they're circle, though. They're circular, right? They're not like cat glasses. They're circular and they're black. They kind of actually look like, you know what, they're tortoise, I think. They're dark um, lenses, but then they're tortoise. But the tortoise shell, like the browns and the gold flecks with the black is really dark, dark around the edges. And um, I see her hair um, not big and poofy, like how I would see it um, like during the Kennedy administration kind of a thing, not like the 60s, but it's, it's more straight and it looks a little bit less. It's not as poofy, so I don't want to say it's thin, but it looks... Um, less pumped up kind of a thing. And she's got long trousers on and they're kind of flowy and they're brown. And I feel like the colors that I don't feel her more black in tones and colors if she's going to be stylish. Uh, I feel her much more brown, kind of brown and neutrals and that kind of thing, which is probably why I chose this outfit to wear. And I wanted to be classy, so I had to do the pearls, you know. Um, that's how I feel her and she feels very philanthropic like I can f I feel as though she did a lot of charity work and had a foundation um, she feels like I feel I feel her um I've never actually been I don't think I've been where she's showing me it feels like a kind of an island, not an island, but a, uh, a piece of land out of the, um, out of the United States that is off to the east, the east coast. So like the New England area, but it's off to the east coast. It doesn't feel like it's in New York. Um, it kind of, the vibe feels a little bit like the Hamptons, but I don't, it's not the Hamptons. It's like a Nantucket or something like that. That's how it feels. And that's what I'm seeing because I'm seeing like the beach and I'm seeing the water and I'm seeing the wind, lots of wind. And I'm feeling like this is a happy place. This is a happy time. Um, and there's so much to talk about with her. And it's interesting because I don't feel her one on one. Like I don't feel her tangibly physically in my presence at this point. I feel her showing me like almost home movies of herself. Like, but I see her, the description of her in the, um, brown trousers and the hair that's not really puffy seems later in her life. Um, not during the time of the Kennedy administration, but then she's kind of flipping me back. I feel like we're going kind of jumping back to like, she's showing me being pregnant and I'm not sure are you pregnant with Caroline or John, John, little John, John. Yep. John, John. Um, she's referring to, she's giving me reference to him. He is in the afterlife as well, which is one of the things I would have asked you. Um, again, I want to be clear. I can see very visually the information that she's showing me is very visual, clair, uh, uh, clairvoyant channel for psychic communication. But I don't hear a lot of audience. So she's not, it's not clear audience. She's not speaking to me necessarily. The information is coming in forms of thoughts, um, like kind of paragraphs, I guess you could say. And I'm feeling like this might be a little random, you guys, but um, I'm feeling like she may have had a fragrance named after her or something. Um, there's some kind of a, or a signature fragrance. She may have had a signature fragrance that she always wore, I'm not sure, but that just kind of zoomed in here. Um, she feels very, very elegant and very um, sophisticated and, but very 
simple in like the way that she dressed style like I feel like she's almost like a style icon and that's interesting because I don't think I would have actually said that about her before but the way that she's presenting stuff to me she has this awareness of how the public views her but she is not catering to the public view if that makes sense she has she's not um, adjusting her own unique style based upon what what the public expects of her she's just she's being herself but herself the person that she is 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 sophisticated and is elegant quite frankly but simple in the way that she dresses so so going back to um being pregnant i can see her in a powder blue kind of like a sheath dress back in um looks like the 60s 58 and it looks like a powder blue sheath dress, but it looks like um, there's darts in it, like um, like it's a maternity dress is what it looks like. And I see her in flat blue. Um, so it's like a baby powder blue, and I see her in the white gloves. And then I see um, black flats. Her flats, her, her shoes are flat. They don't even have a heel, but they're black flats. They're kind of like little slippers. And it looks like almost like a casual, like she takes off her gloves. And it's like a casual, this is like her casual outfit. <laughs> It doesn't look that casual to me, but um, I see her tending to the children. She's sharing, um, she's sharing through the clairsentient channel, which is the heartfelt channel that she's very proud. She has so much love for her children. Um, her daughter Caroline and her grandchildren, just so much love. I feel like there's somebody that's named after her. Um, and I feel like there's also a name, Olivia. I don't know what that's about um, or who that is in her life um, or in her ancestry lineage um, in her family now, going down generations. But um, she's very proud of her daughter, Caroline. And um, she says she takes after her father is what she's saying. And so, okay, so Jacqueline, it feels like I should call you Jacqueline. And she says, oh, you can call me Jackie. And she's telling me, I want to share with you something, Bridget. You know, she says, I want to share with you something. And I feel like we're in a room that has white furniture, off-white ivory furniture, and is classical furniture. Um, um, there's a, like a bureau or a, a, a table, like a sofa table, but it's against the wall. And it has kind of a, just a, a curve to it. And it's shiny. It's like a mahogany colored, almost like a cherry wood colored, um, but very classic, um, very clean lines. And um, she says, I want to show you something. And so she's getting out this, it looks like a magazine. Um, she's sharing me, she's sharing with me a picture of her, one of her homes or her, uh, I don't want to call it a house. I feel like she has homes, but she also has a, like a flat. I don't think it's in Europe though, a flat. Um, she says, I loved France. She's telling me that she liked, really enjoyed going to France. So she's saying something about France and it, not just Paris, she said, but you have to get out of the city and it's just beautiful in the country there. She said, just beautiful. But she's showing me a picture of a magazine and she's showing me that her house or one of her homes, part of, she says, part of, por a portion of one of a few of the rooms, she said, are in this like magazine in a photo shoot like a, a magazine, um, not an architectural digest kind of a magazine, but a, a magazine where they're showing um, like elegant homes or classic homes or something like that. And so she's showing, she's showing me that. She's like, look, see, you know, and I'm like, wow, that's fabulous. And um, she talks about being um, at home in New York. I'm really enjoying the city. And um, she's showing me little dogs. Like I look like there's two. Um, there's a little boy and it looks like I think there's two little boy dogs, little boy dogs, and they're kind of fluffy. They almost look like Yorkies, but they have a little bit different color to them, um, more of a cinnamon color. I don't know whose dogs those are, uh, cinnamon or a kind of a brownish color. I don't know whose dogs those might be, if they're hers or not, but um, she's talking about, like I can see these little dogs walking, um, being in this, you know, walking down New York's, uh, park. I see the, uh, I think it's Central Park. It might not be actually full on Central Park, but it's a park area. It's a portion, it's a side. She said, you, you don't notice it because it's a side view of the park, it's not the main entrance. But there's, um, it, there's a park area, I think it's Central Park, but it's a portion. She's saying that it's, you wouldn't recognize it. Um, and 
I see her in, um, it looks like she has boots on and like very um, beautiful. She is very well dressed, let me just tell you. I mean, even though it's simple, um, I see her in a long khaki kind of wool coat with a, like looks like a trench coat, but it's um like got a couple big buttons here and then she's tying at the waist and she's thin. Um, she looks taller than I thought she was. Maybe it's because of the boots, um, but I'm seeing that. She's walking along the edge of this uh, park-like area. And I'm trying to get a vibe for where she's at. Because um, I see like a doorman and I see like a kind of an awning and I see this busy, busy par part of, of New York. But then I see this other part, this other section that she would either go to or visit. And it's more peaceful, kind of like a neighborhood-like almost atmosphere, if that makes sense. And that's where I see this like hedge, this big hedge by the park. And then there's like this gate you can open up and go through to get into the park, which again, isn't like a public entrance or it's not well known or something like that. Um, I'm not sure whose this is, but that would be interesting. If you know, please put it in the comments below. All right, so of course I'm fascinated and I'm sure um, that many people that would be watching this would be fascinated. We would love to know about your time in the White House. And I'm sure you probably got that all the time in regular interviews anyway. She said, I didn't, not many, I didn't do many interviews. She said, I didn't do many interviews. She had, it looks like she has some friends that, she has a friend that's a photographer. Very, very dear friend of hers that's a photographer that, um, that could talk her into doing some things, um, you know, public appearances or that kind of a thing. But she really, tried to live kind of a, I don't want to say normal life maybe after. Um, she never, she was never adverse to the spotlight, but she never sought it out is how she's describing it to me. She's saying, um, raised in society, there are expectations for you with your family and within my family of how you behave and how you um, go about yourself or carry yourself and I feel like she was educated. She feels like she was um, very well educated and it feels like she was in like high society. So I don't know, her family must have been um, um, part of that kind of social circles and that kind of a thing. So she was expected to um, marry into a, another prominent family kind of a thing. And so because of that, and I see her on horses. I think that she has a love for horses. And because of that, I think... Um, she being in the White House doesn't feel like it was um, unsettling to her or difficult to her, really. That's how, she, that's how she's making me feel. Again, she's communicating through clairsentience, which is a sensing feeling channel. She's helping me to feel information by how, by how I'm, um, she's helping me to feel the information. Let's just say it that way. Um, Again, I see her really loving horses and I see Caroline riding horses actually. And then I also see a farm um, and I see it up in Northern or in New Hampshire, in Northern something or New Hampshire. It's Northern something and then I see New Hampshire. So I don't know if it's past that like up or if it's there. Um, and then I see, and I even see her like riding with like getting medals and ribbons and all this, like it's a big deal. Her and her daughter share this in common. And I also see that um, during her time at the White House, though, there wasn't much time for that necessarily. Um, for herself, she admits, for herself, there wasn't really time for herself. Um, being the first lady was quite the duty and yet she feels like she was very prepared for it like she gives me this feeling of like it wasn't overwhelming it wasn't more than i could handle it was it was sort of something that she was groomed for if you want to be um use that term which i kind of i really gosh the feminist in me is like oh i don't want to describe it that way but that's the time she says bridget she leans forward and she touches my leg and she says my dear those were the times. That was just the way it was. Women did not wear pants. Not very much anyway. Not very often anyway. And if you did, it, there, it was under very specific circumstances, which is why later in life when I had the opportunity, I made quite 
the impression with my pants. <laughs> and she says, and she shows me her pants. I'm like, okay, very nice. And she said, I made quite the impression with my pants. And she refers to Mary Tyler Moore. I'm not sure why she refers to Mary Tyler Moore, but she's showing me Mary Tyler Moore and pants. So there you go. And, uh, and she says, okay, so interesting. So I brought up the term feminist. So you were the first lady and first ladies over time have, sometimes they take on different roles like, um, like uh, Nancy Reagan and anti-drugs and like uh, Michelle Obama and um, education, for example, and health and f health, health in, uh, for children. And so uh, what, I mean, did, was that kind of a thing back then or was it not as much back then? And she says, do not forget that I had icons myself to look toward like Eleanor Roosevelt, who was very much considered a rebellious woman. And there were many others indeed, the women behind the men at that time. So to speak of the first lady role in a way that is not simply choosing the China patterns or decorating the White House is not, was not unheard of and is not out of line. Although it may look on, it may look to the public that that was our role to support our husbands. That was also the role in that time generationally. And so you must remember that. But do not, be, do not be misinformed that one of my interests was in the international relations area. I quite enjoyed the trips and meeting people from different cultures and in different parts of the world. I quite enjoyed that. That was a piece for me, that diplomatic relations, that if I had a job now in your times, in your times, if, if I had a, a job in, in your times, it would be something like um, a, as a diplomat or perhaps an ambassador. That would be something that I'd be interested in. So were you interested in politics before you married um, John Kennedy, or is that something that um, you're interested in at all, or is it just something that kind of came with the package? When she says, Jack was very good looking, and he is someone that would definitely make you swoon. He was very charming. He was funny, and he had a he had a he just had a way about him. He just sort of almost like cast a spell on people and men and women alike could be wooed by him. And interestingly, I have seen it happen at many a dinner where someone would completely change their, their expression, their attitude, their viewpoint on things after having conversation with Jack and really getting to know him. There was something about his personality that, that created it allowed you to be comfortable and he was quite likable. He was quite likable by many. The political piece aside from, you have to remember that I grew up around many politicians and people who, those who were not politicians wanted to be friends with the politicians. Politicians and politics was considered very, uh, a very powerful place to be. It was very powerful. I mean, that was sort of the pinnacle. You know, the young men would go to school to become lawyers and 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 uh, run their families' businesses and become financial officers and things. And the ultimate pinnacle of success would be political office. And I know that may sound a, a bit different than how you might perceive the whole political arena or politics now, when there's so many different parties now and, and so many different, um, much, it's a much different landscape today and there's a lot of opportunity for, for lots of diversity in your political system now. But at the time that we were in the White House, it wasn't like that. And, you know, it's funny because Jack wasn't actually the one that was 
handpicked or he wasn't the first choice by his family to become the figurehead or to become the great politician, the president. He was not the first choice. And when his older brother uh, died, it sort of was put upon him uh, rather unexpectedly. I think he would, uh, his, he had, I, I feel as though my husband at that point had a great deal of, of commitment to service. He really loved his country and the idea of being called to serve in the capacity of being an elected office as a senator or as the president of the United States was quite honoring to him. He, he took it very much as an honor. And although in the social circles we were in, it, again, it was very much a pinnacle. It was a, a crowning achievement for a family to have that kind of a person in it. It, it was never intended to be Jack. And because of that, I, I think... He was a better president. He was, he was more loved. People could know him, really, in the public. And I'm not sure if that was what got him elected or if that was just a nice bonus or extra because his family name was very powerful and his dad worked quite hard to make sure that he would be a strong candidate for the position of president, you know, the highest office. But I don't think Jack expected that, not at the point that he was called up, so to, in, in, a, in, a, in a way to say it, in a way, uh, frame of reference, what are you trying to say? In a manner of speaking, she says. Okay. And, okay, so can you talk about... So being married to the president. So I am going to ask you, um, I have channeled some others. I haven't, um, at Above Life Channel, I haven't talked with um, Jack Kennedy, John, or with Robert or Edward or, you know, Teddy at this point. You're my first Kennedy relation to speak to. But I have spoken with um, Marilyn, Marilyn Monroe, who I know um, was an adorer of your husband at the time. Um, and I know that since then, you obviously remarried and such um, to Mr. Onassis. And I'm curious about your awareness of her and um, any meetings or anything you may have had with her or any kind of... Um, um, interaction with with Marilyn and, and for that matter for any anyone else either any other you know Hollywood types that you might want to bring up and I, and I don't mean to be rude by bringing in Marilyn Monroe because I know there's a lot of controversy and some drama around the relationship um, between her and Jack and also Robert as well and your family let's let's just say that I don't mean to be disrespectful or rude at all by asking that. I'm just, I'm bringing it forward because I, I feel um, I had a conversation with her and I liked her. I was impressed with, I mean, she's quite a bit smarter than I think people gave her credit for. And um, I know that she adored your husband as well because she's very open about that. Hmm. Let's see how she responds to this question. Jack had many fans, and I would not be surprised at all if um, Ms. Monroe had a crush on him. Many other st starlets and many others also had an adoration for him as well. And I think, and you know, that's understandable. I think that just comes with the territory. You have a very famous man, uh, a young man um, at that time in politics and, and, and powerful and good looking and intelligent and all of these things are quite attractive. And so I would not be surprised um, when I would 
to be told that someone else had an attraction to him. Okay, all right. And then she says, and I will share that I had a good friend. Um, uh, she's talking to me about Catherine Hepburn, that they were friends, her and Catherine Hepburn. She's saying, um, Catherine was a dear friend of mine. And so it wasn't, and it wasn't like Hollywood, uh, like other stars and things didn't come to the White House and that kind of a thing because, because we did. We entertained. That's what you did. So... Um, I wouldn't be surprised, however, though, if others were attracted to him. I would not be surprised by that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I feel Catherine Hepburn big time. I really feel her in a connection to you. I feel like friends, like really friends. Um, all right. There's so many things we could talk about. Oh, can you share? So on the other side in the afterlife, um, you have a lot of family members that have crossed over. You know, both your husbands and um, your son and his wife. And are you, is there anyone in particular that you would want me to channel, to speak to, that you think would benefit the viewers at Above Life channel to speak to? And if so, what order do you think that that would be good? I, I would like your input. That would be great. And she smiles. She has this big smile. She just has a big smile, and I can see the top part of her teeth, and um, she just has a big smile, and she says, um, family is very important. She says, family is so, so important, she's saying. And she says, I think you have a good handle on things. She's like, far be it for me to tell you what to do next. You can never tell a strong-willed woman what she should do. You can't tell her what to think, and you can't tell her how to vote either. That's one message, actually, I would like to leave with others, especially women, to stand up and be strong, to recognize that the world around you is going to be pushing on you and making demands upon you that might not be right for you. And if something's not right for you, then don't do it. Go the other way. Take a stand and have a voice and vote. You have opportunity that none of us ever had. Don't waste it. Okay. Public service announcement from Jacqueline Onassis Kennedy in the afterlife. That was awesome. Thank you for that. Very strong, very strong. Um, a very strong woman, not vocally strong, but in her presence, strong, very strong. So who, who should I talk to next? And she's right away, she shows me a picture of, of John, John, little John Kennedy Jr. and his wife, Caroline, Carolyn, Beset something. Yeah, and his wife. So, all right, I will talk, I will speak with them next. And she says, you have lots of time. Like she's looking at the boys, the Kennedy boys. She says, you have lots of time for them. They are not going anywhere. They will come to you, Bridget. They, those Kennedy boys, they will come running to you, she said. But I would like for you to channel, she says, I would like for you to, to talk with my son and my daughter-in-law. Okay, I will do that. This was lovely. Thank you so much. for Chanel, all of a sudden, I just got Chanel. So um, I don't know if that was the brand she liked to wear and glasses or scent or something, but I just, it just, boom, Chanel. All right. Thank you so much for your time, J uh, Jacqueline. I, I do appreciate it. I, I have a uh, wonderful, I have an, I don't want to say an adoration, but an affinity of with that for your family, the whole, all the Kennedys and such. It's so, it's so interesting to me. So Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. And for those of you who are watching, if you know some of the responses to some of the questions that popped up during this conversation with Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis, please write them in the comments below. Did she have a signature fragrance or scent? Do you know? Did she like France? And if so, what part of the country is, is she known to visit? Was she in a, a video was she in, or what, I'm sorry, was she in a magazine? Was she in one, her house or pictures of her home? Were they in a magazine? 
go ahead and put those in the comments below. I'd appreciate it very much. Remember, you've been watching Above Life Channel and here the purpose is to inspire your spirit, fill you up with hope, and give you the inspiration to live your life more fully. Thank you so much.